This one is the larger Allen screw. It's not very comforting. It jumps and skips. Just run it up and down to get the grease flowing a little bit. with the way it jumps. But for now, let's move on. So the next step is to put the motor on and lock it down with the set screws. Uh, this would be best with two people, but I don't have, so we're going to see how that goes. So first things first, get rid of all this plastic and make sure this is wide open. You don't need that getting in your way when you're trying to lift it onto the shaft. Make sure you have, or the second person has, the larger hex key. You're going to want to line up the, end, the motor with the base. And it's too close to the wall. as far as it's going to go. So you need your base to be six inches away from the wall to accommodate the motor. Next step is the feed handles.
They've got notches so you can use a adjustable wrench to tighten them. Don't go crazy, just use a little mini one. So now it says before assembling the chuck and the arbor to the drill press head, you need to clean it with a non-petroleum based product like alcohol or lacquer thinner. If any of the oil or the grease or packing of these parts or must be removed, otherwise the chuck may come loose during operation. I haven't cleaned this yet, but just want to share a note here. <clears throat> like a tape note that when you press it up in there, twist it and you'll feel it go up even further once it hits the right spot. So keep that in mind before you go wild with it. Make sure to clean it. Alright, so <clears throat> make sure the chuck is wide open all the way up to basically where it locks. Find that spot I mentioned right there. the table height make sure and lock your table height now Press down and it's supposed to lock it in place. You gotta go the correct direction first. <laughs> So there's a list on the bottom of the belt cover, tells you uh, what RPM goes where, and there's a list on the direction sheet of uh, what uh, RPM to do for what kind of product. So they've got a spot here that you kind of shove your chuck into, you might have to you may have to break open <clears throat> a small seal here, but that's how that sits. And then we'll have to mount the light. So I'm into confined quarters to really show you what's going on here. <clears throat> uh, hook up that wire to that, and then use a screwdriver that will actually fit these screws good to go so don't be real shocked if uh, the truck falls out once in a while because uh, <clears throat> I've heard of much more expensive models that actually happening so don't get too frustrated as long as you clean it out clean off the grease and oil and whatnot it shouldn't happen very much also, this gauge is not accurate. Don't count on it. 
I don't know about you, but I did not buy this uh, <clears throat> drill press because of the light here. I actually tried to find one without it, but I suppose it will help at some point. stops pretty quick. I would expect a little dry sound or a little odd sound the very first time you uh, turn it on. anybody messing with your drill press pull this tab out and it won't start the manual does tell you uh, which bits you can use according to this you can use the normal twist drill bits brad point bits Forstner bits spade bits and spade bits with spurs and uh, if you have anything that's pretty long and you need it to stay stable you're supposed to clamp it down on one end and lean it toward the base on the other side on the back side this is the uh, list of recommended operating speeds I don't want to show it to you too well there, there could be some kind of uh, issues I will show you this though <clears throat> I specifically bought this thing to uh, do the stuff I can't do with it. it says do not use wire wheels router bits shape shaper cutters circle fly cutters or rotary planers 